So it's a great privilege to be able to introduce our keynote speaker for this morning. Um, and she currently is the director of Atris Limited, a business providing consultancy services for the social enterprise, private and public sectors. Currently involved in a number of boards and trusts, non-executive director of the Northern Ireland Science Park, trustee of the Integration Fund, uh, also co-chair of Irish International Business Network, the Northern Ireland chapter, amongst very many other things. And she was appointed by Ministers for Employment and Learning and Education as Northern Ireland STEM champion. She was previously a non-executive director of Sentinus, member of the Northern Ireland Higher Education Strategy Review Steering Group, Council member of, uh, member of Northern Ireland Chamber of Commerce and board member of Momentum. Her career history spans from the audit department at Vellacott and Bailey in Belfast through to the Oracle Corporation UK Limited, where she was regional director for Northern Ireland. There she developed the company's corporate social leadership program in education. And if that's not enough, in 2012, she was awarded an OBE in the Queen's New Year's Honours List for services to business. So could I welcome Dr. Joanne Stewart to the stage. Thanks very much, and it's a pleasure to be here, and thanks very much for um, asking me to, to come and talk to you today. Um, you start to realise how many years you've been working when, uh, when you start to, to hear some of the things that you've been involved in. Um, but today, um, obviously, I'm here to talk about science, technology, engineering and mathematics, and why it's so important um, to Northern Ireland and the development of our economy, um, and why we need to encourage more of our young people um, to be studying the sciences and consider careers within the STEM-related industries. Um, the uptake of, of STEM and ongoing interest in STEM is of huge importance. Um, we need to be uh, developing our economy and growing our private sector economy. And as you see when I go through my presentation, um, a lot of that is based on um, industries that require a good, strong foundation of science, technology and mathematics. But I'll also touch on other subjects um, as well. Um, so what I want to talk about is, is why it's important. Um, I then want to talk about why it's our, it's our heritage, it's in our DNA in Northern Ireland um, to be able to be successful in these emerging um, industries. And then I want to talk about what's happening here and now in Northern Ireland. There can be a lot of um, quite negative reports in the media sometimes, um, and we don't have such a sort of a spotlight on some of the, the really good things that are happening um, in Northern Ireland and what gives us a good platform um, to build on. Then I want to look at the global opportunity um, uh, out there across the globe, and that's the whole thing with technology now. There's no geographical boundaries, and I just want to touch on some of the really exciting areas that Northern Ireland companies can and are getting involved with. Then just want to look at innovation, and then um, sort of finish off with what's happening in Northern Ireland around the success um, through STEM strategy, which is all about trying to develop the skills that we need uh, to move forward. So let's look at the economic challenge. Um, I think this is something that is um, everybody knows um, that we, we've got our challenges with the balance within our economy. We're very reliant on the public sector um, with um, almost um, a third of uh, employees working within the public sector, but also our companies are reliant on the public sector and the amount of money that is spent with almost 70% um, of our GVA, which is supported through spending of the public sector. Now that's not sustainable. Um, we all know that we're in times of austerity and um, there's a lot of focus on public sector spending. Um, so it's not an area that's going to grow. And what we need to look at then is how we grow our private sector. So what we want to do is grow the cake of our economy. It's not going to come from the public sector. It's got to come from the private sector. And to do that, we can't rely on spending from within the public sector. So we've got to grow our economy by looking outside of Northern Ireland. So either that's by um, bringing um, foreign companies who are investing in Northern Ireland, bringing money into Northern Ireland and jobs. Um, and also we've got to look at how we sell outside of Northern Ireland and increasing our exports. So that's very much about looking about how we grow our own indigenous companies and give them the tools and the skills that they need to actually export and creating products and services that are wanted around the globe. 
When we look at the growth areas um, for Northern Ireland, um, now these have been, um, this is from the um, executive, um, they have come up with their priority areas for growth, both as an economic strategy and then um, obviously a supporting skills strategy. And within the economic strategy, the areas that um, have been identified are around advanced materials and engineering. So that's covering aerospace and we obviously know we've got Bombardier, you've got Talas, you've got BEA Aerospace. We've got a, actually a, a growing aerospace industry um, in Northern Ireland. Ireland and there's, there's been a lot of focus on how we support and develop the skills for that. Electrical and electronic engineering, automotive and renewables, again um, in the area of energy, um, we know that we're trying to look for alternatives to fossil fuels, so that whole renewables um, is, a, is a growing area. Also in financial and business services, which includes ICT and software development. Um, and that's been really where a lot of the announcements have been recently with the likes of um, Allstate uh, announcing their jobs and, and Deloitte's as well. Um, and this is an area of, um, especially within the financial services, that we've grown um, a real area of expertise um, in Northern Ireland. Um, and when you look at the financial services, um, a lot of Obviously, financial services happens in Wall Street, and 50% of the software that's used in Wall Street is developed in Northern Ireland. So we're really developing a skill in that area, um, and there's, there is continuous growth in that area and job opportunities. Also within telecoms and ICT, the life and health sciences, um, the creative industries, and also um, agri-food again, which we've heard a lot about recently with the new strategy coming out for um, the agri-food and how we grow that. And as, as things, as other countries start to develop across the world, diets change, and that's where our agri-food um, industry really starts to grow. So for example, if you take the likes of China, where there are more people that are moving out of, of, of poverty um, into the middle classes, and their diets start to change, for example, milk is something that they now have introduced into their diet and they can't get enough of that and that's where actually uh, where, uh, one of our growing markets in Northern Ireland is producing that powdered milk for, for the Chinese market. So there's, there's all these different areas that are growing and what is common to them is that, they, that really they're based on um, people having a knowledge of science, technology and maths and having a strong foundation um, of those in which to build on. But we also obviously need um, a good um, literacy and numeracy and also a, a really a strong foundation of languages, arts, humanities. It's really about bringing all of those together but ensuring that we have science, technology and maths at the heart of that. We also need other personal skills such as communication, um, the, uh, personal, the um, creative thinking um, and problem solving. And, and what you'll, you'll hear is you'll hear different acronyms of, of, um, of these things coming together. So we talk about STEM and then we talk about STEAM which is uh, bringing the area of arts because that whole area of, of creative thinking, um, being able to, uh, you know, that creative curiosity does come out of, of more of those art subjects. Then we've got STEAM which is about bringing the entrepreneurialism um, into, into our science and technology industries and then I've just heard today STEM L which is about bringing languages in. So really what we're saying is it's about having that, that good strong foundation of those core um, subjects but ensuring that we have science, technology and maths as part of that. And as I said earlier on <coughs> This is, um, this is in our DNA, this is our heritage, the sort of skills that we need to develop these industries are skills that we had years ago. Um, we have a rich heritage of, of innovation and innovators in science and technology. And as we know, for decades, um, the people in Northern Ireland um, led the world with their innovation and engineering excellence, um, particularly within shipbuilding, building over 1,700 ships in, in Belfast, but also supporting the creation of, um, of other industries, such as the rope building industry, which added its peak was, um, was um, producing 100 tonnes of rope per week. The world's first uh, railway was powered by hydroelectricity, was unveiled in 1883 by the Trail Brothers, running between Port Rush and the Giant's Causeway. The world's first cardiac ambulance, which had the mobile defibrillator developed by Dr. Frank Pantridge, was introduced here in 1965. And we've not been short of inventors, and the ones we all know, Harry Ferguson obviously developed the modern tractor, John Dunlop the pneumatic tyre, Jack Chambers the first Vauxhall car, Rex McCandless the Norton motorcycle. So James Martin, the aeroplane ejector seat, and Dame Jocelyn Bell Burnell, the astrophysicist who discovered pulsar stars. 
Belfast Sirocco Works invented air conditioning and the Royal Victoria Hospital was the first building to be fitted at it, with it. So Northern Ireland led the world with these firsts, either innovating um, products um, or actually inventing the products and services themselves. And it's important that we recognise our past achievements, but it's even more important to recognise that we're still inventors and innovators and we're world leading. As a director of the Northern Ireland Science Park, I see the great strides that are being made by Northern Ireland companies and individuals today in science, technology and engineering um, 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 innovation. And I can ensure you that despite the difficult times and the negative media uh, reports, Northern Ireland is leading the world with successful, innovative uh, companies across many industry sectors. Now I've just got some facts, some did you know facts about some of our more established companies. So one in three London buses are manufactured by Wright Bus, who are a global innovator in bus design and pioneers of hybrid electric uh, technology. Obviously just down the road here, one in five, or one in four, sorry, computer hard drives are made by Seagate. 40% of the world's mobile screening devices are made in County Tyrone by Terex Finlay. 50% of the world's um, first-class business airplane seats are made by BE Aerospace in Kilkeel. And as I said earlier on, the first mobile defibrillator and first truly portable defibrillator were invented by the late Professor John Anderson, who started the company HeartSign, which supply their automated external defibrillators worldwide, including in Air Force One and the White House. Billions of pounds of uh, transactions <coughs> uh, from Citigroup are processed through Belfast every day. And Schrader Electronics is the global leader in tyre pressure monitoring systems. It's all happening in Northern Ireland. But there's also very many exciting startup companies that are developing products that are groundbreaking. And I've just got two examples um, here. Oh, sorry, I should have gone through my pictures, shouldn't I? Sorry, <laughs> that would have been much more interesting. <laughs> So MOF technologies, they're in the area of nanotechnology and mech mechnochemistry. Um, and they're bringing a revolutionary new class of materials to market. Now metal organic frameworks or MOFs are highly porous materials that can store, separate and capture specific gases. They have a range of high value applications including natural gas storage in vehicles, carbon capture, catalysis, catalysts and drug delivery. And MOF Technologies has developed a patented technique for the synthesis of MOFs, which is environmentally friendly, rapid and highly scalable, allowing cost-effective large-scale deployment of these extraordinary materials. Then innovative biotech company PathXL, who are based um, at the Northern Ireland Science Park, is a global pioneer in the use of web-based solutions for digital pathology and provides innovative software for the use in education, research and clinical sectors worldwide, creating a comprehensive digital uh, pathology platform. And these companies are being noticed um, across the world. MOF Technologies is recently just speaking, um, has spoken at a, at a global conference around the technology that they've developed. And PathXL is just growing from strength to strength. And these are all companies that are examples of the game-changing technology that is being created right here and right now in Northern Ireland. So what are some of the global challenges um, that are facing the world and that Northern Ireland can be at the heart of in helping to solve? And we have the opportunity to become one of the most innovative and entrepreneurial economies in the world. And our local talent has the ability to create innovative companies that could provide solutions for many of the world's problems, be they in communication, health, energy, environment, transport or food and water supply. My background is in the technology sector and the speed of technological advancement has been phenomenal over the last 40 years and we're now in the third platform evolution. So the first platform was the mainframe, you had millions of users and thousands of apps. The second platform, which was really what my career was around from 1985 to 2005, was about the internet and the graphical user interface. You had hundreds of millions of users and thousands of apps, tens of thousands of apps. Now we're into the third platform, which really is from now for the next 20 years, and this is about mobile devices, cloud computing, social technologies, and big data analytics. You're talking about billions of users and millions of apps. A recent IDC report stated that the ITC, IT spending in 2013 would surpass $2 trillion, and estimates that this will rise to $5 trillion by 2020. So it's a massively growing sector uh, globally. Locally, we have 700, over 700 companies, and our sector is growing at nine times the Northern Ireland average, generating turnover of 1.4 billion, and currently employing around 30,000 people. 
but we have estimates that another 20,000 jobs could be created over the next four years if we have people with the right skills. It is a growing opportunity. There are 1 billion connected devices today with 20 or 200 billion forecast within a decade. Mobile devices are becoming an important part of our everyday life, holding all our information, monitoring our health, managing our transportation, managing our energy consumption, transforming our education, and how we keep in touch with what is happening in every corner of the world. On average, every household has at least five devices connected to the internet. The amount of data that is being created is accelerating. 92% of the world's data was created in the last two years, and only 1% is currently being analysed. And that's the whole world of big data, and why there's a lot of um, growth in that particular area. As a society, we are increasingly independent on technology. We live, sorry, dependent even. We live and compete in a global world where technology has removed the barriers of distance and provided the tools to enable people to communicate, collaborate, and share ideas and information online and in real time. We've seen the growth of social technologies. Facebook is estimated at a billion users. That's over half the global internet population. Google Plus is about 350 million members worldwide, and the fastest growing network, Twitter, with 40% growth in the last six months. But there's no reason why the next Twitter can't be made in Northern Ireland. And that's the exciting thing about technology. You can do it anywhere, and we can do it here in Northern Ireland. But some of the other areas um, where we have um, challenges, in the last 50 years, energy consumption per person has tripled, and we need to develop solar, wind, and hydro energy sources to replace our reducing fossil fuel resources, improve solutions for energy storage, energy efficiency, and sustainable transport all need to be developed. We have 7 billion people on the planet, with 10 billion predict predicted in the next 30 years. To feed the world, we have to develop higher yield crops with greater nutri nutritional value. Water will become a scarce commodity. The world is facing a potential food security crisis. And the challenge is to produce and supply enough safe and nutritious food in a sustainable way for a growing global population. And as we saw recently with, with meat, we also need to be able to, to have full traceability um, of our food cycle. The search for cures and treatments of chronic diseases never ceases. So these are all the global opportunities um, that the world is facing and that can be solved right here in Northern Ireland. And the challenges will only be addressed through the innovative application of science, technology, engineering and maths. The economic vision is for Northern Ireland to become one of the most entrepreneurial and innovative knowledge economies in Europe by 2030, with the phrase innovated in Northern Ireland to achieve global recognition and to be the envy of the world. The future of our region depends on the ability to create and grow more innovation-led companies that are developing products which are globally in demand with originality and value-added quality that few other regions can match. To do this, we're fostering an environment in which any individual with talent and ambition in Northern Ireland can succeed. And the Northern Ireland Executive, as I said, have identified all of these areas that we need to grow and they've identified the skill areas that we need to grow and one of those is obviously around science, technology, um, engineering and maths. And the success through STEM strategy was, um, was based on the STEM review which was chaired by Dr Hugh Cormican and um, which reported in 2009. And in 2011, the Northern Ireland Executive produced the success through, skill, uh, success through STEM strategy. And part of that was the creation of a STEM business group um, which I chair. And the remit of that was about promoting the importance of STEM to the economy, to inspire and encourage the take up of um, STEM subjects in school, in further education, in higher education, and to encourage careers within the STEM related um, industries. But it was also about facilitating that better engagement between business and the education artery. Because one of the things that we need to do is we need to make these subjects relevant to our young people who are deciding to study them, to show them that the opportunities are there if they study these subjects. So that's all about de developing um, much more attractiveness with regard to our careers. Um, and also looking at how, um, <clears throat> when, when young people are, are, um, are looking at different things and making different choices, that they've got the right information um, to make the right subject choices. 
But also one of the things, and, and something we're doing a lot of work in at the moment, is around gender balance. Um, because when we look at the, the sciences and technology um, and engineering, we're particularly seeing that there is a bias towards more um, um, boys uh, choosing those subjects um, over girls. Um, and we need to look about how we can make these industries much more um, attractive to women as well as to men. Now, we're working with a number of partners um, on, in, in the success through STEM with the likes of School Employer Connections, W5, who obviously are going to speak um, later, Sentinus, the Association of Science Education, Business in the Community, AFE Colleges, the HE, higher education institutions, and obviously the learned and professional bodies. Because it's important that we all come together, that we have a consistent message that is getting out consistently to the school estate. What we're finding is that there's some schools who are really engaged in this area um, and other schools that aren't as engaged and we need to ensure that we can make sure that, we, that we're consistent across um, all schools. And how we're doing that is through how we engage uh, with education. So I've just got a couple of examples of different programs um, that we're doing that engages with schools. So from the Northern Ireland Science Park, we've got our Generation Innovation, um, which is a network for 16 to 18 year olds um, who have got more of that sort of entrepreneurial flair. Um, and we've all come across those young people who um, really have got loads of, of different business ideas and are really excited about the whole um, area of maybe going out and working their own, but being within business. And this network provides a support for them to come together um, and we've got some people who, who are actually developing products at the moment and we're, we're supporting them and others who are using this as a network um, to, to get out there and to meet other business people. We've got the Christmas lecture at the Science Park, which aims to take the science and put it into a context for people to understand what the, the commercial reality of, of science is and how we can take research and actually make it and grow it into, uh, into large successful companies. And so last year we had a um, research from, uh, or a lecture from Warner Chilcott, um, who were talking about the whole area of chemistry and what they were doing and, and how their company was, was developed. We also have the Festival of Innovation, which again is something to what you're doing today, is bringing companies um, together so that they can talk to you about the areas that they're working in and the innovation um, that they've got within their companies. And I think that's one of the most important aspects, and that's why I think today, the most important part of today is about that opportunity to get to speak to businesses and to understand exactly what they're looking for and how you can work with them and how they can support you um, in, in the curriculum. Also, the likes of Sentinus Young Innovators and BT Young Scientists. Um, these are one of the things in Northern Ireland is that when we get involved in these competitions, we are really successful. Um, and Sentinus Young Innovators, which is coming up in June um, at the Odyssey, obviously BT Young Scientists takes place in January um, in, um, in Dublin. And I know again that a lot of our schools are really successful in, in these projects. And this is again taking some of that science and technology and working with businesses to, to resolve problems. Um, and again, uh, the young people get a lot out of that but it also helps them to sort of again to relate to what they're learning in school and to how that actually works within the commercial world. Obviously W5 STEM ambassadors um, and Arlene's going to, to speak so I'm not going to steal her thunder around the STEM ambassadors program but that's a great program for your schools to get involved with um, that helps to link you with, um, with people within the business world. And then the Museum of Here and Now, which is something we're developing at the uh, Northern Ireland Science Park. Because one of the things is quite difficult sometimes to actually find you know, where all these companies are and what they're doing. Um, and it was something that um, I was talking to, to my niece who's doing um, A-levels um, and hadn't heard of companies like Randox and, and Almac, which you know, I thought were really commonly known sort of world-leading companies. And so what we're doing is the Here and Now brings together those companies. So in one place, you can go and see what the companies are, how they're being innovative, of what are the key facts about that company and we've, we've done the first phase which has been 14 companies and now we're developing that out and it's going to be coming down to Culture Tech um, in September um, so it's going to be something that you can actually sort of walk around and find out more about the companies that are actually working um, in Northern Ireland. Fab Lab, and you've got one here in the Nerve Centre, and there's one in Belfast in the um, Ashton Community Trust, which again is a great um, facility, uh, working with MIT, um, and it again provides that um, ability for you to, to go and, and try different, um, they've got um, different uh, technologies that are available, um, and again they expose our young people to those technologies and what, what you can achieve with them. 
And then Coder Dojo, we know there's been a lot about um, computer programming. Um, and there are a lot of jobs in Northern Ireland with sort of around software development. Um, and one of the things is, again, how do we get our young people interested in them? And Coder Dojo is a movement um, that started in Cork, I think, um, and is now a sort of a global phenomenon. Um, and it's about really uh, introducing young kids to computer programming in a fun environment. So I take my nephew, um, who's 10, to the one in Belfast Met, um, in, in, in Belfast, and I know there's one running um, in Derry as well. Um, and it's just great to see how because they've got that such creativity um, at that age and then to have the tools to be able to do something with it um, and you can just see the excitement um, that, uh, that the kids get. Now what's great is I know that there's a lot of this sort of work going on in primary schools and it's going to be mandatory uh, from September, you know, introducing these sort of programming languages and tools um, to young people um, and we just need to make sure that that continues through their, their post-primary um, education. So these are just things and obviously with Coder Dojo it's supported by business mentors so again they're getting exposure to people who are working in business and are actually using these skills on a, on a daily basis. So for me, the, the future um, is bright, um, and what, what we need to do is we need to just get out there and sort of sell the message a bit more. It's about making STEM cool, um, and certainly in the technology, it was always seen as a very um, sort of nerdy subject, um, but now it, it's about trying to, to change that perception and trying to sort of, you know, for our, for our, our people to, to realise that, you know, these are really good careers and, and good alternatives to maybe what we've traditionally uh, been pushing our young people into. And also there are different pathways. This isn't, I mean, one of the things working at the science park is that, you know, people think it's just for people with, with degrees and it, it's, um, you know, it's not for everybody. And, and that's so not true. There are so many different pathways um, into the STEM related industries. And also there's so many different types of jobs as well within the industries. But if we look at, there's, there's almost 3,000 STEM apprenticeships um, every year. Um, and there's also uh, companies that are starting to create some innovative ways for you to get in um, into, into jobs but continue with your studying. So for example, Kainos, software development company, um, they've just introduced um, a new scholarship where you can go in after A level be working but studying part-time um, for a degree. We've got Asidja who offer um, scholarships um, and as I say we've got a number of different apprenticeships you know, working with the further education colleges. So there's multiple pathways um, um, into the STEM related industries. We also need to be looking at role models. Um, in the workforce, I, I touched on gender. Um, in the, when you look at the STEM-related industries, the jobs are about three to one, um, men to women, um, within the industry and in the workforce. When you look at um, uh, higher education, it's about 38% of those studying STEM degrees are women. Um, and when you look at further education, it's 28% um, of that it's, it's women who are studying um, within further education around STEM-related um, um, uh, courses. So that's something that we've got to, to do a lot. We've got to challenge the stereotypes um, and again, you know, uh, tackle that sort of gender bias um, because, it, you know, I came through the technology world. I mean, there's lots of great opportunities for all of us. And like any business, we need diversity within business. We also need to respond to the changing um, economy. Um, our economy obviously was very industrialised, you know, when we had the, um, the shipbuilding and we had those large industries. And the profile of our economy is changing. It's moving more into the uh, knowledge economy, to the very high value um, manufacturing um, and engineering. And so it's about helping people to understand how that profile has changed and therefore where the new opportunities are and the new job opportunities and the skills that we need for those opportunities. It's about aligning our interests, education and business and how we can support each other. Um, obviously business you know, are looking for um, um, skilled people to come into their workforce but it's how they can work with education to, um, to, to help you to do your job, to create the people with the, to, uh, the, the skills that are going to help them to achieve their potential within the workforce. And it's also about raising the ambitions of our young people and broadening the horizons to what is possible and what is possible in Northern Ireland. That um, although you know, I am a supporter of people spending um, time outside of Northern Ireland, I think it's a great experience. But the fact that we can do these things in Northern Ireland, that you don't need to go away um, to other countries if you want to set up your own business or you want to, to have a successful career uh, within the sciences and technology, that we're growing that in Northern Ireland and these opportunities are here in Northern Ireland. So for me, STEM is at the heart of the commercial world and what we're trying to grow in Northern Ireland. And it does provide exciting um, career paths. And it also gives our young people the opportunities to make a real difference at home and on the global stage. Thank you very much.
Thank <laughs> you.